All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays. And today we're going to be going over some news that have uh, hit Teleria or have hit Plarium. <laughs> have hit Teleria. We got uh, an extreme fusion challenge. So you guys got to be aware that this is an extreme fusion challenge. It's not even a regular fusion. So this fusion is designed for whales. So don't get discouraged. Just don't even do it. But there is a silver lining. There is actually a good champ that you can get, an epic champion. Uh, instead of getting Brachis, uh shift changer, I think that's his name. I think he changes your shifts at work. <laughs> anyway, his name is Brachis the Shifter. So they even say this will be a hard fought challenge, but for those who succeed, the award will definitely be worth it. So Brachis is actually a very good uh, legendary champion, but this is, this is right here. The time has come for our toughest fusion event yet. Then you get your hands on the ferocious legendary champs. So yeah, so Brachis is good. So this, is, this event is designed for whales. So if you're a whale, this event is worth doing because it's a cheaper way to get brackets but for free to play players or um, even dolphins you know light spenders this is, this is not worth it and the reason that is is because one of the champions is behind a huge paywall uh, we'll discuss the new the 14 new champions after this let's talk about the fusion first so this champion is a new champion she is hidden behind a paywall so there's only two ways to get her and that is from the uh, one tournament and one event so one of the events that you can get her from is the champion training event, but it requires uh, 19,400 points. And last time I tried doing that free to play with Sue Firstborn, I couldn't even reach that. And then the other way to get her is from a tournament. But unfortunately this tournament is a champion chase tournament. Uh, it's right here. And then she is a top prize. So 6,000 points to get her. I'm at 739 because I opened uh, some rare shards and I got lucky I actually got a legendary. So I got Rollbar. I did get Bombarder as well. Bombarder is needed for the fusion. Uh, this guy is also needed for the fusion. Um, I think this is doable to get him from the Champion Chase Tournament if you're opening up Mystery Shards, if you have a uh, thousand Mystery Shards, something like that. Yeah, so I did. You can see how far I am. I'm like, I just have to get um, I, this guy from the Ice Golem Speak. But even if I do get these champions, these rare champions and fuse these epics, there's no way I would be able to get um, Umbral Enchantress without spending anything. So the silver lining is that there actually are some good champions here. So for free to play players, I would recommend going after Bombarder. I already got him. I got lucky because Bombarder is basically a, a tiny Vizier Ovelis because his basic attack has a 15% chance to increase the duration of debuffs. So I would recommend getting him and also getting this champion, Haro Specs, because this guy has a revive. So he revives a dead ally with 30% HP and then fills a turn meter by 30%. And then he also can fill turn meter of all allies by 15% and also increasing their speed. And he also has poison on his basic attack. So he is a very good champion for free to play uh, players. So Horos Specs is good. And fortunately they are needed only for this fusion because on this side you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna want to get this champion if you're free to play. Defile Sinner. Defile Sinner is gonna be a crazy champion for you to use in Spider's Den for an, an affinity tank. Uh, you guys can check out my videos because he is a force champion. Um, he would be a great affinity tank. Because right here he says uh, he presses decreased defense before attacking. And if five or more enemies are alive, uh, he does the following attack instead. So he does an AoE on his basic attack. So that's going to happen often with the in the spider's den. And he places 25% increased attack buff on the champ on himself for two turns before attacking. So he's going to be he's going to be a beast. He also has a move that's based on enemy max HP. He attacks one enemy and attacks all enemies inflicting damage equal to 15% of their max HP if the first kill hits an enemy and the second hit cannot be critical. And also Corrosive Smog, he attacks all enemies and damage increases by 10% for each enemy alive. Stacks up to 100%. So yeah, this guy is very good. I would actually recommend going after him. I will be going after Defile Sinner. And you guys can be can use him as an affinity tank. So that's all of the champions I want to talk about that are the Silver Lining. So it was Bombarder, the Horror Specs, and... Um, Defiled Sinner, I would recommend going after those champions. And now we're going to go over the new champions that are in Raid Shadow Legends. So I already discussed Bombarder, why you should go after him. If you max this out, he has a 15% chance of increasing duration of all debuffs by one turn. So this is basically like a mini, mini Vizier of Ellis. Um, he also has increased speed if he crits on himself. And then he has a triple hit that has a 50% chance of placing a 2.5% poison debuff for two turns. And when you max that out, it's going to be a 75% chance on a 3 turn cooldown, so it is pretty good even though it's the weaker poison. And another new champion is the Word Bearer. Make everybody knows that the bird is the word. Oh, well, a bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. 
Uh, her basic attack's not that good. She just attacks and decreases accuracy. Um, <laughs> I like this, but it's only a 30% increased defense. She places it on all allies for two turns. So she's not she's not that bad, but like if you're starting off the game, she's she's pretty bad. Uh, she's not that bad, but for late game player, she is bad. This guy is a beast, man. I'm actually working on this guy. Frontline warrior. <laughs> he's a defense based champion. His damage is based on defense, and he has an AOE on his A1. And this ability is pretty good too. Plays an ally protection buff on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns, and he gets an extra turn. Does he grab them? No, he gets an extra turn. That makes more sense. And that's on a four turn cooldown. So this guy is a beast. I'm actually going to work on this guy. Maybe I can get a video out for you guys. But my videos are uh, kind of slow now because I'm doing everything free to play now. So the good news is these guys, High Elves did not get any new champions. So High Elves Sacred Order did not get any new champions, so that is good. And I don't know why they're even releasing commons anymore, man. So this guy just attacks one enemy, damage based on defense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, he looks like, you know what he looks like? He looks like this guy right here, Shield Guard, but a different color. So it's very, uh, <laughs> it's very original. I think people are trolling too. Look at the reviews. People <laughs> gave him a five on everything. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. So Ogryn Tribe also didn't get any luck, but Lizard Men finally got some luck. They finally got a Void Legendary Champion. Um, Chris, the Ageless guy, like, is literally, this guy's a turtle, man. This guy's cool. So this guy is not a reskin, so that is good. Uh, that's a, he's a defense-based champion, so let's see if his damage is based on defense. Yes, it is. So that he, we can tell that he's going to be good. AoE on basic, and that de does decrease speed. That is good. A2 is also an AoE that places ally protection buff on all allies except himself for two turns. And he places two continuous heal buffs on himself for one turn. And then he can increase the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. If you partner this guy with a champion that places counterattack, that is beast. So this guy is very good. He has a provoke, AOE provoke, that play also places increased defense on himself and increased speed buff on all allies except himself for two turns. So I'm guessing that they their plan with this kid is to make him slow and he can speed up his allies. Because he does have a pretty low base speed. He's got 94 base speed. Uh, Might of Ages is his passive ability. At the start of each round, he places shield buff on all allies for two turns. Equal 50% of the champions. All oh, that is very, very... Uh, I would say that is pretty broken. <laughs> um, yeah, at the start of each round. But okay, so that actually makes it a little bit better. And he has a 75% chance of placing a decreased defense buff and decreased attack buff on the target on the attacker for one turn, one hit. So yeah, this guy is a beast. I actually want this guy. And he's a turtle. Not a ninja turtle, but he's a turtle. And then there's this guy that I was talking about. He has a revive, he has the um, increasing speed and fill turn meter for his allies, and he has poison on his basic attack, so he's a pretty good champion. And he he can be obtainable free to play. So Skinwalker's got Snorting Thug. He's one of the guys required for the fusion for Brachus. And uh, Wanton Muggin, he attacks one enemy two times, and he has a 20% chance of stealing a random buff. Um, I don't think it, honestly, I don't like this guy because Augurin Jailer also steals buffs. And he's a rare champion. This guy is an epic champion, so it's a waste of skill book. Yeah, so I don't I don't like this guy at all. I think they just threw him in there just to be fodder for Brachus. So yeah, as I said, I did get Robar. Um, I threw him in my vault for now. I don't have time to level him up right now. I have other champions to do. Uh, Twin Claw Disciple. He is actually needed for the fusion as well. He has 100% heal reduction. So this guy is a viable choice for Fire Knight for people who don't have heal reduction champions. So those abilities are single hits, but if you need a champion that has 100% heal reduction, he's a good choice. And Demon Spawn, for whatever reason... <laughs> for whatever reason, Demon Spawn got two more legendaries. Let's take a look at the epic first. So Umbral Enchantress, so she is the paywall. She is the Sue firstborn of this fusion. So she's defense-based champion, damage based on defense. It does make sense because it's damage proportional to her current HP. So I'm guessing if you can build her close to like 100k HP, she's going to be doing 100k damage. That's, that could be pretty good. Uh, she has an AoE that can place block buffs, debuff for three turns, damage based on defense. So she is actually pretty good. She has AoEs. Uh, she can place provoke debuffs and she plays unkillable buff for two turns. And uh, yeah, too much things about block cooldowns and stuff like that. So I say she is pretty good, but if you if you already if you have her, you might as well go for the Brachus uh, fusion. So there's no point in keeping her. Uh, another guy is Tyrant uh, Ixlimar. I don't know how you pronounce that. This guy looks familiar. Yep, there it is. The skin change right here. How are you going to do that to legendaries, man? <laughs> oh my god, Plurium. So this guy is HP-based champion. He's basically like Prince Kaimar. 
uh, his basic attack he heals the champion by 25% of the damage inflicted and if the champion is under uh, HP burn that he attacked if the target is under HP burn he heals himself by 50% of damage that is pretty beast that is a lot of life steal because the life steal set is I think 30% because life steal set I think is 30% and this guy's doing uh, 50% if the target is under HP burn and his kit is all about HP burn which makes sense because he is demon spawn but I prefer if they actually made him a different model uh, be more original please Hellfire Torrent attacks all enemies and has 75% chance of placing HP burn debuff on all enemies for 3 turns. This move is crazy man. I can't swear so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, place, Infernal Minions places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except himself for 2 turns. And places increased defense buff on all allies for 2 turns so that is beast also. And unfortunately his damage is based on his defense. I don't know if that's a mistake like Infernal Baroness and they're gonna change that into defense. Hope, I'm gonna change it into HP, hopefully they do that. Uh, Fires of Doom is his passive, it decreases damage inflicted by enemies under HP burn debuffs by 10%. So this guy is a tank. Increase ally HP and all battles by 25%. So his aura skill is kind of low, but it is universal, so that's okay. Yeah, but please change this guy's skin. I know they won't do it, but <laughs> it is pretty funny. Duchess Lelitu. Does she look like anyone though? Well, she has the same, literally the same stance in Crew Troxa. She just has different things in the back. So she basically is Crew Troxa, but with these uh, wings instead of um, these dreads. Like, I'm gonna call them dreads. <laughs> so she's a support champion, and she's a spirit. So I think she's she might be the best one that I've seen so far. Let's read it over. Uh, double hit and place a shield buff equal to 10% of the champion's max HP for two turns. Two turns on this champion and the ally with the lowest HP, so that is beast. Damage based on defense. Shroud of Souls plays a 50% increase attack buff and block debuffs buff on all allies for two turns. That is crazy because of the block debuffs. And she plays a perfect veil and buff on all allies except herself for two turns. So she's like kind of like a support champion that is a tank. Kind of like a molly kind of thing. Um, Spectral Rebirth, revive all dead allies with 70% HP. This dude, 70% is massive, man. I think that's the best heal, re best revive in the game so far. Like the biggest one. Plays the veil buff on all allies except this champion for one turn. And she plays the continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. And on a fortune cooldown, we'll max out. Passive ability, ability ethereal ways. Decreases the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 25%. 15% from bosses, that is crazy. Decreases the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 40% if an ally is under a veil buff. 25% from bosses. So I think this one's the best uh, champion that they released so far. Not the best in terms of looks, whatever, just the best in terms of kit. And then increase ally speed and all battles by 90%. So she is a beast. If you guys get her, uh, let me know down in the comment section. I know some of you guys like summoning. So Undead Hordes, for whatever reason, got an uh, uncommon champion. Basic attack is basic, attacks all enemies and has 75% chance of placing a poison debuff on all enemies for two turns. So that is not bad. Uh, might come in handy when the Hydra comes out. And I think that was all the champions that were released. Let me know, let me know down in the comment section if I missed any. Hopefully I didn't. Are you guys gonna go for the Brachis uh, Extreme Fusion event? Let me know down in the comment section. Um, I probably won't be getting him. Uh, we'll see how things go. I'm gonna try to do everything free to play. See how far away I am from acquiring him and see if I need if it's just like a little bit of money to get it, I don't know. I might do it, might not. I mean, I don't I don't need him, but we'll see what happens. And, uh, if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you guys are new to the channel and like what you see, consider subscribing. I make Great Shadow Legends and Dragon Champions content almost every single day. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.